Animation by itself is great, but adding a background to your scene can create immersion and add some atmosphere. And if you ever want to make a show or anything like that, it's something you need to learn. Now you have animated backgrounds and 3D backgrounds, which I intend to make separate videos about eventually. But today's video is all about simplicity, so we'll be covering still image backgrounds. Still image backgrounds are probably the most commonly used, since most shows aren't just 100% sakuga. There's a lot of talking and simple movement scenes and things like that that really don't require 3D or animated backgrounds. By using a single image, you can make it more detailed while saving yourself from having to fully animate a background for every shot. You can use any drawing or painting software you want for making your backgrounds, but some things to remember are always to use as large a canvas as possible and keep the quality of your file as high as you possibly can without uh, blowing up your setup. Doing this will allow you to zoom in, zoom out, and pan around your background freely without worrying about loss in quality or clarity. You can do your backgrounds in whatever style you like. Uh, if you can paint, go right ahead. I feel like painted backgrounds with and backgrounds with painterly aesthetics look the best in animation, especially because you don't want to draw too much attention away from your characters actually moving, so having a background with a different style from them can just kind of help separate those two things. I'm not the best at painting currently, although I'm working on it, so I'm going to add a little bit of thin line work to my art just because my brain thinks in lines, so I need to have some in there, uh, but feel free to do it however you see fit. With my medieval background finished enough, especially since this scene is only 3 seconds long, I'm not going to be moving around it too much. This is enough. I could have finished the whole strip if I wanted to, but it's not really necessary since it's just for this. I'm not going to reuse it for anything. But definitely think about reusing your backgrounds when you make them, especially if you're going to be using the same location several times. It's good to always think ahead about how it can be reused and how it can be saved. But always keep in mind not to do work that you don't need to do. If you're never going to show a shot of the sky uh, with this background, you don't need to draw all the way up there. It's just a waste of your time and energy. And with time consuming things like animation, you don't want to waste anything, especially your time. So I'm going to go back into flip a clip so we can actually merge our animation with the background. There are two ways to do this that I know of, I'm sure. Once you see it for yourself, you can think of a way it works for you. I'll start by showing you the easiest first, since simplicity is always best. So I'll save my animation with a solid flat color background, preferably one that has no resemblance to any colors that you've used in your scene. Usually a bright green is good, or a bright red. Um, these characters have orange and green in them, so I wouldn't want to use a red or a green background, as that would match too closely with the characters and mess up the later steps. So I'm going to use a white. Now open your editing program of choice. I'll use CapCut for this video, but you could use InShot. You could use basically anything you like, as long as it has chroma key and keyframing ability, which the majority of editing apps do. You'll start by importing your background as a photo, and then add your animation itself on the track above that photo. This process will be slightly different depending on the app you chose. In CapCut, they refer to it as overlays. In InShot, they refer to it as a pip. Um, if you're using a computer app, it might be way simpler. You could just add a track above this one, but you understand the point of what I'm getting at. So once you have both of those in your program, you're going to go to the animation and remove the background. To do this, I'll use the chroma key feature. So basically how chroma key works is you select a color and you can remove anything with that color from the video file. So I'll select the white here. You can select whatever color you use for your background. And I'll just increase the intensity until I see all of the white disappear all the way up to the edges of my characters. If your animation starts to disappear a little bit or uh, fade out, you can adjust the shadows as well as the intensity until you find that sweet spot where all your background is gone but your characters are still fully there. And if you find that that still isn't working, the color you're using in your background might be too close to the color of your characters. So you can either go back and re-export with a new color, or if you have every color in the rainbow in your animation, I would suggest separating 
your export into parts. So if you have something red, something green, something blue, separate them all into separate parts and export them separately with different color backgrounds. And then you can recombine them in the editing software. But since my animation didn't have any problems with that, I'll just center it where I want it to be in frame. And now we'll move on to editing the actual background. I'll position it exactly the way I want it to look. These characters are about as tall as the door and the window, so I'll zoom in accordingly. Make sure that they line up the way I want them to in their starting position. And then I'll add a keyframe. Now when I made this animation, the character in the arm, not in the orange, the orange character is supposed to be stepping back and moving back to avoid the green character with the knife and then they'll move forward slightly in the end as he finishes him off by putting his own knife in his face which I think is a little bit of poetic justice but for all we know the orange guy could have started it to begin with so I'll just leave that right there. I'll move my timeline to where the characters are moving back and then I'll adjust the background accordingly sliding it to meet them since as they're moving back these windows will move to the right, and the door will also move to the right. Then I'll add a keyframe there, and that means CapCut will, for me, do the work and move the background from point A to point B fairly smoothly. Now I'll repeat this process for the whole animation, moving the background accordingly and adding keyframes to match the implied movement of the animation itself until I'm done. Then you can export the scene, and you're finished. But you could stop here, but there are some other things you could do to take it to even farther to the next level. That sounded like a weird sentence, but I'm going to go with it. You can add a slight blur to your background to further push it into the background. Also, you can desaturate it slightly if it's pulling too much attention away from your characters, or if the colors are too bright and they clash, you can always desaturate it, or if you need to up the saturation, whatever you need to do to get it to look the way you want. Now several minutes ago I told you there were two ways to do this. The second way, I hate it. It shouldn't be as complicated as it is, but I feel like you should know that it's available to you because I'm sure someone will comment and tell me you could have done it like this, so I'll just tell you straight off the bat. As you might have noticed, you cannot, and if I'm wrong, please someone correct me, but as far as I know, and as far as I'm recording this video right now, the date is right there. You cannot export a transparent video from Flip a Clip or Ibis Paint. You just can't do it. You can't save it with a transparent background. There is no way of doing it. Now, there is a caveat to that. In Ibis Paint, you can save individual images with a transparent background. And yes, although you can add a transparent background in Ibis Paint and save the video, as far as I'm aware, the background is not transparent. I don't know why. It might be different for you if it is. Right, good for you, but for me, it is not. Now, Flip a Clip, on the other hand, you can save a transparent image sequence by doing this here. I'm showing it on the screen. And then you would have individual images saved as a sequence to your files that you could then recut into an animation and then use them that way with the transparent background. This, to me, is way too tedious. I feel like technology is at a point where I shouldn't have to do this. Um, but if you're using a computer editing program as opposed to a mobile device like I'm using, this might be the better solution for you and it might be super easy. But for me and my workflow, it's very, very annoying. I fiddled around with this method for about 30-45 minutes and it's just, it's just not worth it to me. You can do it this way. If it works for you, that's great, but for me, although it's not the most professional way to do it, and it's not the way I want to do it, uh, just saving it with that flat color and removing the background later on works better for me. It's way simpler, and I would recommend it to you guys too if you have a similar workflow to me and you use these two apps that I use. The chroma key removal method is still superior. So there you have it, that's how I add backgrounds to my animations. That's the most simple way to do it. I'll eventually get around to 2D animated backgrounds and 3D backgrounds, both of which are super great. I'm learning more about the 3D side, although there are so many ways to go about it. Some are super simple, some are more complicated, and 2D animated backgrounds is more of a skill thing than 
necessarily being complicated or uncomplicated. It'll also depend on the style you're using and how detailed it is. But I'll get into that in another video, so subscribe if you want to see that. Also, I have so many other videos on my channel that are pretty good. So if you like this video, like this video, and then go watch another video. Thank you very much.